Welcome back to Life to the Max at East Ridge High School in Woodbury, where they have a pretty formidable girls basketball program. Did you know they started playing basketball for women back in the 1890s? Oh, there were some twists and turns along the way, but at the Hall of Fame in Knoxville, Tennessee, you find out there's quite a history. Take a journey to Knoxville, Tennessee, and you find a slice of basketball history. Because it is about basketball history. The Women's Basketball Hall of Fame starts with a statue. The bronze statue was designed and commissioned by Elizabeth McQueen, um, a sculptor out of California. It is following our mission statement, which is to honor the past, celebrate the present, and promote the future of women's basketball. We have a young lady um, that represents the past in the bloomers and the midi skirt and the non-bouncing basketball from the passing days. The present is what looks like a WNBA player of today, and then the future is a young girl playing basketball. It is a history that extends much further than most people realize, starting well before Title IX. The mother of women's basketball is Cinda Berenson. Uh, women's basketball was first played at Smith College in 1892. Um, it's a different game than what you see now. It was a no dribbling game, passing only. They played for a very short period of time and then set the ball down, took a break, and the basket at that time had a drawstring. They had to stop the game, bring out the ladder, crawl to the top, open the basket up, get the ball down, and continue playing. The game has changed and evolved in so many different ways. Young girls, for the longest time, unlike their, their male counterparts, we didn't, we didn't have the opportunity to play on a team. We didn't know how to win together, how to lose together, how to react to either one of those together, what was, what's role playing. And so you've, you've seen now women going through that. They know what their role is on a team. But to understand where it's at, you have to understand where it's been. If you're in Knoxville, you are reminded of that rich tradition. The women's game has now progressed. We were going through a lot of time periods where the public conception and, and just general conception of what women could do was they were not able to do you know, physical labor or physical activity. So that has changed over the year. Um, it has now caught up with the men's game, but it took many years. And that's a little bit different than the current, where it's evaluated on its own merits. And you could almost see it as you walk through this building, the confidence and the, the overall acceptance. If we'd done this ring of honor, you know, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have had all these jerseys. It, so the growth has just been tremendous. That's what makes a tour here so enlightening, to find out what's changed, and the changes have come in so many ways, shapes, and yes, clothing. The early dress um, or uniform of women's basketball, it started out as long. It was a long skirt, midi skirt, and it was wool or linen. And anybody that's worn wool or linen in the summertime or trying to exercise, that's not a real good combination. It changed over the years. Um, during the war period, it went to a shorter uniform, went to the satin, almost short shorts, and then it went back down to the longer shorts in recent years. Fast forward to today and you do see new look, but you also evaluate the game in a different way. Do they set good picks? What's the fundamentals of their jump shot? What about free throw shooting? Now we're moving into the era of I'm cleaning out the lane, I'm going to establish my position. More and more young ladies are beginning and will in the future uh, the, to do the dunk. So the question will be will we maintain the, 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 the purity of the game, which is running, dribbling, passing, and shooting and rebounding. See, back in the day, there was a group of players that toured the states, known as the Redheads, a barnstorming group that held passion for the hoop. The All-American Redheads were a traveling women's team. They traveled from 1936 to 1986. They typically traveled in and played men's teams, high school teams, or local celebrities in the community. Um, they were very much a show team, kind of like the Harlem Globetrotters that we think about today. When the game started to change on the college front is when colleges started to prioritize it. First colleges to offer scholarships to women for basketball was Wayland Baptist College out of Texas and Nashville Business College out of Nashville, Tennessee. My calling was to, to be a teacher and my passion was basketball and so what, what brings me back is to help these young student athletes set goals and then reach those goals and you know it's not about me, it's not about my coaching staff, it, it's about taking their vision, and taking their goals and then trying to establish the path that we want to take and then inspire them, encourage them, and challenge them uh, to be the very best that they can be. And hopefully that means ultimately they're going to win a championship. And now as you look at the past, you can't help but wonder about the future. 
What they're working on, and I think that we all are in, in, in this, is the credibility of the skill, uh, the, the, the appreciation of the athlete and their skill sets to perform and play a game of basketball. If you want to get a feel for what has been and what is to be, this is the place for you. The Women's Hall of Fame in Tennessee. Obviously, we're the only um, Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in the world. We honor all levels of women's basketball from AAU all the way up to the professional leagues. We are international. We do have inductees uh, from foreign countries, not just the United States, that are honored in our um, Hall of Honor. That's the idea, to create history. When we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of Life to the Max. Stay with us. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.